Monday Thursday is the time we remember the Last Supper of Jesus. The Last Supper of Jesus points us to the death of Jesus in our place on the cross, his body and blood given for us. Monday Thursday gives us what's behind that. What's behind Jesus giving his body and blood for us is his love, God's love for us. Tonight I want to help you think about the connection between the body and blood of Christ given for us and the love of God. The love of God is what's behind it. John 13, starting in verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Verse 22, the disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table at Jesus' side, so Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. <clears throat> so when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some saw, thought that because... Judas had the money bag. Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I say also to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my, my disciples, if you have love for one another. There are two ways that the end of verse 1 can be translated, the way it is here in the ESV, love them to the end. Or the other way, he showed them the full extent of his love. <clears throat> I think that makes a lot more sense, given the context, the place where we see the full extent of God's love, the full extent of the love of Christ, is at the cross. Monday, Thursday shows us what's behind the cross, it's the love of Jesus. The old hymn, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus, expresses this in a really great way. Listen as former co-worker of mine, Johnny Cowan, sings it. Uh, listen.
Monday Thursday gets its name from what Jesus says in verse 34. Jesus says, a new commandment I give you that you love one another. Monday is a word that has its origins in the word commandment. So Monday Thursday is commandment Thursday. And what commandment? To love one another. What's puzzling to me about verse 34 is that Jesus says that this is a new commandment. How is it new? The Jews of the Old, the Old Testament, were told to love one another. Leviticus 19, 18, you shall not take revenge or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Thousands of years before Christ came, God's people were commanded to love one another. And Jesus certainly hadn't forgotten that he himself, maybe three years earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, told his disciples to love one another. Matthew 5, 44, Jesus said, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. So, how is it then a new commandment? What is new about the love that Jesus is commanding on Monday, Thursday? And the answer, I believe, is contained in the commandment itself. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. The new part of the commandment is that we are to love one another the way Jesus loved us. How did Jesus love us? Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friends. Throughout the scripture, we find the truth that the wrath of God must be poured out upon sin. I am a sinner and therefore fall under God's judgment, but because he loved me, Jesus Christ took that wrath upon himself. In his long, agonizing death on the cross, Jesus was carrying the weight of my sin. He removed it, and by his grace, through faith, I have been saved. Monday Thursday allows us to see that Jesus loved me into eternal life by his body and blood on that cross. The new commandment is that we must love one another as Christ loved us. Now, of course, I've never really kept this commandment. I've never loved anyone as Christ has loved me. I didn't love even my parents that way or my kids or even my wife. Daily, I must pray, Lord, give me strength to love like this. Do a miracle. Put that kind of love within me. In these days of coronavirus, we've all experienced displays of love for one another, and it's been a great time for that. But it's also uh, done the opposite. It's revealed the weaknesses in our love for others. The answer is this. Keep looking at the love of Jesus. We go back to the Scripture. And we were reminded of what Jesus did for us. We were reminded of the steadfast love of God for us.
coronavirus situation means that we've been separated from one another. We've done what we could to call, write, and text. And I want you to know that those of you who have contacted me did something that I greatly appreciate, and it's helped. We've done things to stay connected, but still the fact remains that this coronavirus situation has isolated us from one another. We feel the pain, and we're looking forward to when it will be over. The scripture reminds us that there is nothing that can ever separate us from God's love. The ending of chapter 8 of The book of Romans is one of the most loved portions of Scripture because of the way it promises this to us. Listen, Romans 8, 34. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes social distancing has irritated me or annoyed me over the past few weeks. It's also hurt me. I am so comforted by what Romans 8 has said. Nothing is able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And these days we need to be reminded of that. Psalm 136 has 26 verses and every single one of them ends with the very same phrase, his steadfast love endures forever. And 26 verses is just the beginning of it. Any Christian can continue to add a countless number of statements that are witnesses to how God's love endures forever. We'll close tonight with a song that Johnny wrote, meditating on Psalm 136. And when he wrote it, he said this, I could write a thousand verses and still never tell of all the ways God displays his love towards me. He's right. Listen. Taste and see the Lord is good. His love endures forever. No sin, no past can hold him back. His love endures forever. Oh